Hey guys, my name is Crystal Daly, AKA the Beauty and Brains Coach, and I am here today to remake a video I did a little over like a year or two ago. Yeah, I wanna say 2019 and 2020, 2020 to 2021. Yeah, I did this video two years ago. It was my very first video, and I broke down what you need to study for your state board theory exam. I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to give you the revamp of the revamp. The All right, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. You are preparing for your theory exam and you're like, Crystal, I just do not know what to study. There is a document that lives on your state board website. Every state board has one. It's the first place I go to when I am coaching or tutoring um, a cosmetology graduate. And it is your state's CIB or TIP, um, depending on what state you're in. It can call it, they can call it all kind of names or whatever. But basically, it is an information packet that tells you exactly what you're going to be assessed, assessed on and how much that stuff is worth and what you should focus your energy on. I am going to include an example of one of those somewhere, let's say like right here. So I am currently looking at Ohio's testing information packet. So again, this is that document that tells me exactly what my Ohio students are being tested on. I will say this, this is a disclaimer. It is important that you find your state's testing information packet or candidate information bulletin, CIB. Does not matter, but it is important that you double triple check your own states. That's number one. Number two, what I will say is 98%, 95% of everyone's testing information packet looks exactly the same. And infection control is worth 25% of your test here in Ohio. So it's important that we know universal precautions. Universal precautions means, hey, if I cut myself or I cut my guests, what am I going to do all the time? The different levels of infection control, so sanitation, disinfection, sterilization, the different types of bacteria. How do we keep our clients safe? How do we keep ourselves safe? What's the difference between a bacteria, a virus, and a parasite? So these are the areas that I will focus on for infection control. Make sure we know our hand washing rule that goes under universal precautions. So something I would like to add about infection control, all of the acronyms that your educators taught you, so the EPA, the FDA, OSHA, MSDS, anything that are, that are letters in capital, know those letters in capital. They, they're they kind of important. They live under safety. A lot of times they live under infection control, um, chemical handling. All right, so the next quarter of your test is going to be the anatomy and physiology of different pieces and parts of the human body. So let's talk about it. 20, 27% of Ohio's exam is based on the anatomy and physiology of the human body. So like bone, skin, muscle, right? Also the anatomy and physiology of your nails. So the pieces and parts of your nails, the anatomy and physiology of your skin. So the pieces and parts of your skin, and then the trichology of your hair. So the pieces and parts of your hair, can you label them? Can you break them down? Do you understand the properties of the hair scalp? So it's not so much, can you study all these chapters or can you have all this information memorized, but do you understand the pieces and parts and how they relate to our industry? So let's start from the beginning. Anatomy and physiology pertaining to the bones and the muscles. We know as a cosmetologist, we can do hand and arm massages, we can do pedicures with massages. We can do facials with massages. Those are the areas we need to focus on. So do you need to understand like the brain, stem, and the spinal cord? No. 
Do you have to understand your reproductive system? Absolutely not. You do have to have a basic idea of these systems, but nothing too intense or too in depth. When we talk about the anatomy of the nails, it's the pieces and parts of the nail. If you were to look at a picture of a nail, could you identify the free edge? Could you identify the nail bed? If we talk about diseases and disorders of this nail, could you under, do you understand when they talk about the matrix of the nail? What is the matrix of the nail? When we talk about the anatomy of the skin, there's three layers of the skin. What are those three layers for? What's the difference between your dermis and your epidermis? Can you organize that information in your mind? And then when we talk about trichology, we're talking about the pieces and parts of that hair. So when we talk about the hair shaft, when we talk about the cuticle, cortex, medulla, when we talk about the hair follicle, the dermal papilla, do those names or do those labels ring a bell for you? If not, you better get to studying, kiddo. Under all of those, under anatomy and physiology, it's also important that we understand that we're studying the diseases and disorders of those pieces and parts. So anything that can go wrong with the skin, we need to know about it. Anything that could possibly go wrong with the nails, we need to know about it. And any conditions or diseases or disorders with the hair and scalp, we also need to be well aware with those too. All right, the next quarter of your test will be hair care services. So under hair care services, this is everything we do behind the chair, guys. So shampooing, blow drying, hair cutting, um, thermal curling, the use of rollers, the use of perms. Um, also, a lot of times students will get really overwhelmed with chemistry. Like Crystal, the chemistry chapter was really, really hard for me. I am here to say, you don't have to be a chemist. Ch chemist. You do not have to be a scientist. You do not have to be a chemist. We basically need to understand how chemicals affect the hair. How are we chemically changing the hair? What structures in the hair are changed after using the chemical? So when we introduce bleach to the hair, how does that chemically change the hair? When we introduce relaxers to the hair, how does that chemically change the hair? When we introduce perms to the hair, how does that chemically change the hair? We also need to know um, color formulation, how to navigate around colors, how we hold our tools, the names of the tools. And this last quarter, I'm kind of grouping up together. There's actually a bunch of little individual groups. So for example, they have chemistry, electricity, products and tools as like 5%. Um, so how do we use electricity behind a chair? How do we use electricity in skincare? How do we use basic chemistry in skincare? How do we use basic chemistry in hair care? Um, there's also skincare services and nail care services. That is a policy. Skincare is 7%, nail care is 7%. So when we talk about skincare, we're talking about facials, we're talking about massage, we're talking about light therapy on the face. When we talk about nail care, we're talking about basic manicuring and pedicure and then artificial nail services. I would really focus on acrylic, um, but also just kind of feel good knowing the difference between maybe a gel and an acrylic enhancement versus a nail tip versus a sculpted enhancement. Commit to yourself and do what you need to do to get the child done. I love you. Be safe. And I will see y'all next time.